Okay. Oh, we're all right. We're gonna we're gonna roll now. So guys, Thank you so let's much. start at the microphone. very beginning. Okay. Yes. Sean. Hi. That's you. Yeah. Yes. Tell us about how this idea came to fruition. So this is super cool because this is a uh, full circle for me. I uh, went to UT Austin. Um, <laughs> and had this really incredible experience. In my freshman year, I worked at the admissions office uh, giving tours and I met a lot of the people that were in the Greek system then and uh, they were cool and totally not me and that world terrified me. Um, and I was in the closet so it was kind of like being in a house full of dudes was a lot. <laughs> um, so uh, I moved to LA. I always knew I wanted to work in television and uh, I kind of worked my way up uh, as an assistant on uh, uh, writer's assistant for different shows. And uh, I wrote Greek as a sample script because it was something that I knew I wanted to watch. Uh, just kind of a, a love letter to the 80s uh, before Stranger Ooh. Things. Um, <laughs> different genre. Um, and, uh, and the Greek world was perfect for it. And I wanted to do not just something that was taking the Greek system down, but um, playing with it and having fun with it and being able to look at politics and relationships and um, you guys are wearing ZBC shirts, you're amazing. Oh my <laughs> gosh, <laughs> look how cute. Sorry, it's yours. <laughs> Um, so, so, so that was the beginning, and um, you know, I wrote it, and it, I loved 90210 and Buffy and all of those shows. And when I wrote the pilot script, I was like, I'm gonna write something super edgy. This is gonna be like HBO. This is gonna. Whoa. I know, I know. Oh, yeah. You're laughing. Oh yeah. Um, but I was like, you know, there's there's gonna be sex without consequences, and people aren't gonna get <gasps> in condoms. drunk driving accidents, and. To prove a point, so I, I thought I was so edgy, I was insane, and I gave it to my agents, and I was like, so, I mean, <laughs> set up HBO, um, but where else? And they were like, ABC Family, or ABC Family, maybe the WB or the CW at the time. So, um, and to ABC Family's credit, they read the script, they had one note, and they loved it and supported it. And what was I the one to, note? Yeah, yeah. the it, one the, note. The, it, it was on me. The last scene was bad. Oh. It, it was basically like... The, I don't believe it? you. It, <laughs> it, it, it was basically kind of... It, it was tying too much up between Rusty and Casey, and they were like, let's kind of reset things, and that's where Rusty spit in Evan's face oh, yes. at the end. So, so, such so a good scene. It was a good note. It was a really good note. <laughs> um, so I've been talking a lot. Is that... Sorry? You, you, uh, we all want to hear from you a lot. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah. So then... Uh, uh, we cast these amazing people who, um... Thank you, thank you. I know. Well, speaking of the cast... Settle down. <laughs> let's, let's hear some of your audition stories. What was that like for you all? Who wants to start? Oh, uh, audition. Social pariah. <laughs> Remember that line? Oh, yeah. Yes. I read for Casey first, um, so you talk about that. Oh, I don't know. You go ahead. You auditioned oh. for it first. <laughs> no, I no before I auditioned for Franny is all I meant. Not, oh, not yeah. first. No, um, yeah, social piranha. I think is what I say. Pariah. No, it's not. No one wants to hang out with a piranha. <laughs> Boom. Wow. wow. How do I even remember do that? Should we just do it? 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 Should we just do like, tell me I'm shit, like, before we did the scene. Do you remember that? No. Why would they do that to you? No. <laughs> no, I was asking you. Use your was microphone. asking you to do it. And then you, and, and somebody was like, why are you doing that, Spencer? And I was like, I don't know. I'm just trying to be, like, legit, like, I don't know. Method. Method. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we ended up just doing it. It was great, but it took forever. Okay. On those stairs in downtown L.A. somewhere. But it was really fun. That was, like, was a a, good one of our first, like, Brother, sister, oh, moments. Like, here's a it lesson. Was. Here's a lesson for you. Sit me down yeah. on the stage. Jiminy and talk Cricket to on me. my shoulder. That was actually an audition scene, awesome. right? That was like one of the audition one scenes. One of the scenes for Casey. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I remember thinking, oh my god, I have this huge speech that I got to learn for this audition tomorrow, and I'm just never gonna learn it. And then for some reason, when I went into the audition, 
it just kind of came out easy, which I think happens when you're doing a role that you're meant to do. It's not hard or difficult to learn the cadence of that character. It just kind of comes out of you. And so I was very like lucky, you know? It was like meant to be. That's how I felt when I spit tequila all over the girl's (laughs) face. Just came naturally for me. That was actually the I worst audition that, that I remember yeah. when we had like to bring really in to young women to be the one that he spat Ariel, on. Ariel, didn't Ariel book it? Ariel, 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 Ariel. Was amazing. Was but it, it goes to the gay guy where I'm having to pitch to young women coming into the room to be like, okay, so, you know, it's this frat party and they're having a great time and he spits on you. Go. <laughs> Go. And he spits all over you. No it's big great. deal. <laughs> But his name's Jacob Zacher, and he's really nice, and he's going to spit kindly at you. (laughs) This party. When I remember we did, uh, at the end of the pilot, when I spit on McDormand's face, um, (laughs) I didn't hear them. I thought we were, like, rolling for real, and I did it during a rehearsal. Oh, school boy error. And just the shock on his face. He's like... Should have been rolling. He just dripped, and he goes... We were rehearsing. <laughs> that was a really good McDormand. I said, why are we shooting the rehearsal? Gil, come on. <laughs> Makeup's got to come in and fix it all up. Yeah, I was like, well, this is how, this is how yeah, we're doing it. Everyone just cringed. They were like, oh, God, another hour on set. Yeah, right. We had a reset. And like, oh, man, I, dude, I'm going to get fired and recast now. I'm done. Done in this business. Yeah, that's it. You're <laughs> done. Oh, no. <laughs> I remember I read for Casey and didn't get it. And that was fine. And then I got a call back or whatever, and they were like, oh, they want you to read for Franny. And I read it, and she was, as we all know, let's all say together, Franny is a, starts with a B. Let's just say, she's misunderstood. She's misunderstood. Oh, so, and I, and at the time I was like, I don't want to play a mean girl. I don't want to, no, I don't want to do it. Um, but you have to go, and it was a good show, and it was good people, and I had already been in, so you have to go. So I was very irresponsible. And I did not practice my lines before I went in. And I was on the way in my car, and I just was like looking at them, and I learned them literally in the car on the way there. Um, And I knew a girl who will always forever remain nameless, who reminded me of Franny um, from the University of Georgia, who was in the Greek system. (laughs) And I potentially used her as an archetype. And so um, I was like, I know what to do, I got it. And I, I like, rem- I don't know. And I guess you guys said that I was the first person who read for her. I remember I think so, yeah. it was one of the yeah. first people. Anyway, I remember being loud and like, I thought very over the top and like really obnoxious. And I was like, all right, whatever. They're not going to cast me. <laughs> and then, cut to Freddy. Um, but I love what you said. It, I don't know if this is good or bad, but when a character is something you're meant to play, I never like developed for any. <laughs> Digging a hole. If you have um, an archetype for somebody, I mean, that happens yes, a lot. Yes, but she just, I feel like as an actor, she just showed up one day. Like her whole like stance and like her, I, I didn't like figure her out. She just came. And I was like, oh, I'm in Franny mode. And Franny mode would happen, and then that was Franny that. Franny mode would leave. And she would leave. <laughs> bye bye. I love you. No, bye. So that's, yeah, that's how that happened. You got any, you got any, what's your audition story, Amber? Um, I auditioned to play Ashley <laughs> <laughs> and booked it. And I got the part. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. She Thanks, got guys. the Thank part. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank you, much. Um, no, oh I, God, I do I remember you. at my test, though, I think I went in for like two prior auditions, and then when you go in for a test, is where you meet all the producers and you meet all like the network, and it's like the scary time, and you sign contracts, and it's very serious. And I think Jake McDormand was also at that audition um, reading to play Cappy. He had cereal. He yeah, he, he brought, he brought a, bowl a, bowl a bowl of cereal into his audition. To eat. Which is, if you don't know, cool. weird to do. It's like you're in a job interview and you just bring a bowl of cereal with you and you eat it during While the interview. I still keep trying to find a place when I go on an audition where right. I can I think do that. I think I'm about a lot. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I'm hungry. Sorry. But my story's not. I mean, and then I yeah, I went in. I just remember him being there and um and I um. I remember I, I had one of those moments where words wouldn't come out of my meth- mouth properly, like just now. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I mumbled some lines that came out, and I think at the very end, I just started laughing and was like, okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and I left, and I remember after I, I ended up getting the part, but I remember talking, talking to the uh, casting associate later, 
And he was like, girl, I thought you blew that too. Oh! I was like, yeah, I did too. I thought for sure I didn't get that job. Oh, no. Yeah. So that's my story. Yeah, you, <laughs> you want something authentic though. Even if you blew it, it's still better. What you guys saw, but. Uh, oh, we you know, know what you person. saw. We totally know what they saw. That is obvious. I mean, Hello. the thing for, for me, when, I, when we were casting, the thing I kept just thinking about when you guys were reading, I was like, do I want to be friends with these guys? Oh. And oh, so yeah, but so it's also and I'm true. done. And the answer is and yeah, right. no. I think no, the I answer don't. is still no, right? I mean, <laughs> sorry. And here we are. You're saying we're pretending just trying to, like each to other. be friends. <laughs> trying. So. That's a, that was sarcasm. In but case I, you didn't realize. I so. want to know yeah, Zach's actually. story. Yes. I'll tell yeah. my story. Um, yeah. So I uh, I was 18. Um, and they called and told me, hey, this this pilot Greek, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Good stuff. Um, <laughs> I'm on hole maybe nine or ten playing golf, and my rep called me. He's like, what are you doing? You're not at the audition. I'm like, I'm playing really well. <laughs> like, that is amazing. Lights out, playing well. Oh, my God. I might need to finish this. And he's like, no, you need to go. <laughs> I show up about two and a half hours late, walk in, say the lines. <laughs> two days later, they're going to book you. Oh. <laughs> Instant family. Nice. I'm not going to drop there's the mics like, for real. There's like a, a world where this was like the wild west of auditioning, it feels like. like so you want to be an actor? <laughs> we got, we got, yeah. There is no I remember reason. sifting sure. through like 40 girls to read for Casey. I mean, it was a... Casey not, was impossible to find. Well, we saw her on she was tape. in New York, that's she why. She was in New York. We, we yeah. literally were pulling her hair out and oh, yeah, we I saw her. I had just her. become available. Yeah, she was in college. I think we pulled you out of college to be in the I show. remember seeing your audition tape. They're like, this is the girl that's playing Casey. And you, there was something about a pool table and you were, you were very sexy. She had this like, Thank these you. eyes, these beautiful doe eyes. And she was like, something Wait, was happy. it a self-tape? No, no, no. They didn't do self-tapes. Then. Not oh, yet. Yeah, no, that's, God. The world of self-tapes, self-tapes are the had worst. not emerged. <laughs> Uh, no, no, it was it was a casting as uh, uh, Alice. Uh, was it Allison? No, Allison Silverberg. Silverberg was yeah. in L.A., but there was a person. I I can't remember her name right now, but she, I had auditioned for her many times before, and so she called me in. Um, and honestly, I think she told me like she paired me with some not so great girls because she wanted me to get the part. So yes, <laughs> it secrets. Worked. Wow. I mean, because that I mean, you want you if you feel like a person is gonna be the person, you you want to root for them. Set it and up. I was very grateful. I thought that it was such an interesting role that she would, you know, sleep with Cappy to get even with Evan. I thought that was very HBO. I have to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> And Ted, and I was, so, I was, I was like, this girl's awesome. <laughs> yes, get it. Let's women empowerment. I was like, yeah, but she's like, I gotta stay with Evan for my future, you know, as a sorority leader and whatnot. Franny so in it your made ear. sense, right? Yeah, yes. Franny. Franny. That scene was also really hard to do. I yeah. could not say the word. Well, I still oh. don't think that I can either. You did it pretty good just then. Thank that you. was good. No, but it was like super hard. I was like that. Do you remember how many times I said Aww. that? Do you guys remember? Right? Oh, he's like, I, I was remember. Like, I'm gonna get fired. I can't do it. Like, These tears are real right now. Really real. But um, no, it was really, really a wonderful, wonderful role that I got. I, I, I felt so blessed, and we were. I just kind of felt when we shot the pilot, we shot it at the end of the year, so it was like. December, yep. and you're always hoping you'll get a job because it gets real dark. There's no working really from like December to the end of January. There's like nope. Sundance and all this other crazy stuff going on. And so when you book a job at the end of the year, you're like, yes, it's gonna be awesome. Christmas is great. I'm like, gonna buy everybody a present. You're just gonna be awesome. I'm gonna do like, I don't know, I'm gonna go shopping, right? Everyone's gonna get a present this year, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making them this you year. You have something to tell your family members like at Christmas, yeah. like who are you dating? You're like, nobody. Yeah. Nobody. <laughs> What are you working on? Nothing. 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 Why are you in Hollywood? I just, I I'm not know. sure. I'm sorry. I guess I'll go back to school. <laughs> what are you going to say? Literally study? on TV now. So yeah. like, <laughs> no, it was, it was really, really exciting. And it was fun being in LA. And I don't really remember what I was going to say next. But I'm sure somebody else has a spinoff on that <laughs> rant. Well, well, I was going to say, Jacob, you, you had just moved to LA. Like, you yeah. were, like, I, I was living on uh, friends' couches still. And he was late the first day of shooting. Well, I were like, he, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> um, like he's literally staying on a friend's couch. Yeah, I um, 
I dropped out. Of, well, I was I was in school, but then I moved to pursue acting, and then ironically, I ended up in college. So <laughs> it was like a nice mirror, I guess, to real life. Like all your wide-eyed looks at the beginning are like, holy. Like, I'm working now. I'm an actor. I'm on television. Oh my Is this God. for real? So it works so well for the character, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I was, uh, I took the bus to like testing, which in LA is like a rarity to take public transportation, I guess. At that time, which I a didn't little know. dangerous. Yeah, it was like, dangerous, yeah. a little bit. So they called me after the test, and the reps, uh, my reps are on the phone. They're like, so we got good news. I was like, what? I was like, I can't, I can't hear you. It's just real loud. And like, <laughs> They're like, what, where are you? And I was like, I'm on the bus. Like, I gotta call you back. And they're like, I'm the bus. And it's like, click. <laughs> and I like went back to listening to like my CD player, the like anti-skip, 30 second anti-skip CD player. Who had it come out yet, guys? I have like Bone Thugs going or something. Yes, yes, <laughs> I was just yes. like, it's like a like I don't know like I was I was the part and then there's other parts like you were in like a death metal band you were in a metal like band it was like all right too. I was like that's why it's acting like <laughs> whoa what a concept um, nerds like death metal too though that's true right that's not it's very thing. mathematical yeah <laughs> it is time signatures you know so I just want to anyway. say something about casting so the the two people that were the hardest to cast. Um, that took us the longest were uh, Casey and Rusty. And actually, uh, Clark Duke and Jacob Zakhar were both our first choices for Dale. Oh, we basically great. were like, we can't find Rusty, but we have these two Dales. We, we love them both. Oh, we don't Dale. know what to do. So we're so confused. Really One think. is thinner, and the other is, that's it. He's They're not. both super funny. <laughs> We love we love them. It works so, it works so well. Like I was like straight out of the city, and then Clark was just like played up his southern thing, and I was like we met, and I was just like all right, man, I guess we're really, like no, but the the, still yeah, good but the crazy friends. thing I mean, like casting is like a team sport. Like you, it's it's uh, it's a process. You can't just like certain people walk in the room and you're like yep, that perfect. But that's rare, especially for number one and two and these characters that Sean wrote that had to be sort of, Casey had to be like a kind of a bad person, but then you still had to like her. Like yeah. you really had to root for her. Um, I think she's so sweet. And, and be vulnerable and, and awkward. The show kind of always lived in the awkward and the, all the comedy I love doing and all the stuff Sean writes is, is sort of truth and awkwardness. And um, Kate Jurgen, the head of the network at this big scary test audition. Um, yeah. Scott Michael Foster, we wanted for Calvin. He was our first choice for Calvin. Amazing. And uh, Jake McDermott was auditioned for Cappy with the bowl of cereal. And (laughs) they were like, yes, please. Our two Dales walked in the room. We had Clark and Jacob. And we were like, well, we still can't find uh, Casey and Rusty. And Kate Jurgen went, well, that's Cappy. Move him over to to (laughs) Scott Michael Foster is not Calvin. That's Cappy. And what are you talking about? There's Rusty right there, the other guy, the skinny guy. <laughs> Boom. And we were that like, should be, oh, That should man. be like the reboot right there. We just all play the other characters. Yes! So oh, my God! Can I See what Cappy? happens. <laughs> I want to play Cappy. I want to be Cappy. I know, I just called <laughs> no, Cappy. I want to be Cappy. I called him. <laughs> I want to play Franny. Okay. Yeah, yeah that would be good. Oh, yeah. That would be good. such a good mean girl. Because <laughs> mm, as a producer, you're just trying to fill the role. You're trying to find the right people, but you don't want the show to get canceled. So you're like, no all right, way. we got to get some people in these roles. <laughs> And uh, so we just try to find the best actors you can find that, that are funny, that are smart, and you can't sort of teach smart or funny. They're either that or they're not. Ooh. And the, this entire cast is, I put them up against any cast in television, friends. Aww, thanks, wow. Sean. And they Sean. crushed it every yeah, day, it they made us magic. laugh. It was a magic, like, yeah. it was a, you can't, you also can't fake like the chemistry that I think we all had as well. You guys put together an amazing group of people who were able to work together collectively and like bounce off of each other and learn. I mean, I learned probably so much comedy from Clark Duke and oh, Jacob in their scenes. I mean, I a lot of times would just sort of copy their uh, timing. Ti- yes, that's the word. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Was that that was also helped me a lot of the time to focus my energy on set as well. It was good. It was really, it was really special. About. No, it was, and it was a really like wonderful experience for for all of us. Yeah. It was like a cast like where we wanted to watch like other people's stuff, like their scenes. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Like it was like proud of everybody else like during their storylines. You know what I mean? It was like Dilshad like nailed the take or something and be like, oh my god, yes. 
yes, Rebecca, yes. And, and then on missing. screen, I'm like, no, Rebecca. That's no. Good. So many people. Yeah, we want to just say that we are sad that quite a few people are not here. They're all working, though. So yeah, we'll Paul James, yeah. Scott Michael Foster, <laughs> Dilshaw Fatseria, and Jake who McDormand. Else? Oh, right, Jake McDormand. <laughs> um, anybody? Clark, oh, Clark, Clark Duke. Duke. I'm kidding. Um, yeah, yeah. Lots, of, lots of good people that we are. But the, the crazy thing was this cast was so amazing, led by this guy in yes. the writer's room, but um, they would shoot an entire day and they'd be like, what are we gonna do now? Let's go out for dinner, let's go out for Woo! drinks. Let's go, I remember one trip, um, I told the story earlier that I was like, we were all friends and we all actually hung out all the time and I was like, hey, we're gonna go down to my, our family has a house down in Baja, California, in Mexico. And I was like, hey, we're, we're all gonna go down to Mexico. And I get a call from the network, like, you're taking the entire cast of Greek to Mexico? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And they're like, we don't have insurance for that. Um, and I was like, it'll be fine. Do you guys want to come? <laughs> and they didn't come, but we went anyways. We had a great time, but literally they loved each other and still do, and they all hang out and play golf. And yeah. Like occasionally. Okay. I don't play I golf in New York. <laughs> it's a little hard to play golf in the city. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Well, as you guys look back and when you are talking to your friends about your experience on the series. For each of you, is there a specific memory that you often come back to from something funny or heartwarming that happened behind the scenes? <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go first, because we'll start, go in order. So, so my just fav- so many, I don't know where to start. So my favorite story, which is sort of how art it imitates life and sort of um, <laughs> is real, is that I was directing a scene with Amber Stevens and Spencer and Amber Stevens' future husband, uh, Andrew West. Oh, such a good story. And I was watching the scene, they were in the kitchen and she's kissing the hasher and she has to duck uh, because she has to push him under the table because Spencer's coming in. And I remember watching the kiss and being like, are you guys seeing this? Are you seeing this chemistry? See what's going on and right now? The, to the cin- here? cinematographers here and the script supervisor right there, and I, was, and I was like, I'm a good director, but I'm not this good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm like, Thank all right, let's- Thank you for let's, my husband uh, and my baby. <laughs> Correct. Uncle Sean. So, <laughs> yep, Uncle Sean. That's my story, that's my favorite. I felt like I had great chemistry with every girlfriend you guys gave me on the show as well. <laughs> You did, indeed you did. Indeed you did. Yeah. yeah. That was like, I mean, that's a cool thing about television. You watch like characters progress and like you started Rusty with like his first girlfriend losing his virginity and how so awkward cute. and how heartbreaking your breakup is. And you try to get back together with the same one. Everyone's like, you're crazy. And then by the end, I'm just like dating a smoke show. <laughs> and like, they're like, where's Rusty now? I'm like, who knows? Like, anything is possible now. Jesus Christ. Meanwhile, Franny gets no boyfriends because she's terrible. I think I, I got Evan for one second, but it was all a ploy. It wasn't real. It's okay. We get it. She doesn't deserve a boyfriend. She, she's killing human. it at CAA. She's doing she's all right. She's killing it at CAA. Yeah. Do you guys know what the, oh, An agent. Oh, shark. Agents are great. They're great people. She's meeting with the ATA right now. What? She's meeting with the ATA right now. Yes. <laughs> yes. Cat break. Cat break. <laughs> cat break. <laughs> I think you played softball. We have what to save some for the back that? row. Save some of the back yeah, row. Yeah, I'll save it. Save for the cheap seats. <laughs> Go, go to the back row. Back row, guys. I think for me, the, I, I had so many incredible moments, and it was just like, there were, there were so many times where I'm just like, it's never going to be this great. Like, just the people, the work, the fun, the stuff the network let us do was just like, are they reading the scripts? <laughs> like, the, the, the ZBZs burned down a house. There was no... We, we had to do it. Or did you guys do it after Franny left? I think Franny was an icky. Yeah, there's some risky stuff. I don't need icky, by the way. We jokes they didn't get. Remember? There's something about uh, De- Evan's taint. Do you remember that one? Oh, yeah. And they're like, it's got an Evan taint on it. And they're like, we don't get it. We're like, don't worry about it. 
It's fine. We did. <laughs> Why is everyone laughing? Don't worry he about it. He said paint. It's fine. it's fine. We did things right. with homecoming floats that should never have oh, been yeah. done or will ever be done again. Y'all had, y- y'all had uh, like Casey like sleep with like a high school student I know, too. This is a storyline he sent to me, and I was like, I was like, how does this stuff go over yeah. nowadays? Like, if the show is on like now, we were like pre social media and then like yeah. kind of post Pre-Instagram as it was guys. starting so we weren't getting like the right. instant reactions like oh. if we weren't making the set people laugh we didn't know if we were doing good or not <laughs> like there's like grips like eating a sandwich like i was like man i'm that funny i don't like this guy's not <laughs> laughing like on set like you couldn't just go on twitter like oh man everyone loves it or everyone hates it like now people are just ripping into shows and movies like the minute so as they're watching it like it sucks you should rewrite this oh and, like, no god oh god jesus give him a break, break man like yeah <laughs> go write your own i don't know <laughs> so i want to answer oh we got to we got to move on to audience questions because oh, yeah. yeah. I know all, as you guys are all probably at least as big a fan as I am and probably have a million questions. So, I believe there are people with microphones. Oh, two And if there are not just a... shout really really loud. And this woman in the yellow. So, you said that you were pitched as an Eddie show radio and in my rewatch there were some jokes that I didn't get the first time So she's asking if there are any was jokes it, that were, were any jokes not approved. Wasn't like Rebecca like blowing lines of coke, coke and stuff? Yeah. yeah. Well, in yeah. The, in the, the, in the, in the, in the bathroom scene with the cocaine. In the, in the, in the yeah. pilot, Rebecca asked Casey for coke. for coke. Right. I remember that. And there was also, this was another awesome moment for me. Um, it wasn't. Um, <laughs> but I was like in my, wearing my edgy pants, where um, the, 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 the Evan Rebecca hookup was a three way with another oh, that's right. with another dude. So wow. the network was like, you know, in, in, in their way, they were like, we want to be supportive. We love this. Let's shoot it both ways. And I was like, okay, but we're using this. <laughs> Code for no, we're not. And then when we're shooting it, we're, we're like setting up for the scene and I get pulled outside and there's six young men standing there and I have to pick the third oh. who's an extra <laughs> and oh my gosh Sean what what do they look like tell us what they look like please they were dying. all hot but, but like, it was what so hot? what kind of hot I'm a father now ah! <laughs> well, I had to it, it, it was and the and the AD was it was just like all right guys take off your shirts and I was like what no he gets paid for this by so the way so then I had this to do job. this awkward like walk down the line and then I I was I told the AD I was like number two <laughs> number two so that poor guy I don't know who <laughs> where he is thing? now but Where's he number two? Cutting room floor three-way like with Jake McDormand and Dillshaw. Could have been that is good. Is there deleted scenes? Is that, can yeah. you find that anywhere? Or is that just lost? I, no, I think we shot. No. Did we shoot it? Why did I pick out naked men? <laughs> I think, I, I'm going to get sued now. I think now. you guys I shot think, it. I'm pretty I sure think, it wasn't like you watched all three of them, but it was like one other person was also just kind of seen in a just room. Just hanging in the back. Yeah, yeah like, no were like, in the back of the room. Like in the back guy. of the room. It was there. Like that. I feel like you did shoot it. I think we did. There, you were there I feel like we didn't shoot. I feel like we ran out of time and we were like, nah. Yeah, there were so many times where it's, you know, the thing that I'm so proud of with the show, there, there are so many things. I loved its heart. I loved being able to do a show like Greek and have heart like that because, um, you know, the, our first 10 episodes came out and then Gossip Girl came out shortly thereafter and it was like Blake Lively was, you know, sipping a martini Nike. and she was 16 and it was like super edgy and I had a moment where I was like alright well I'm gonna up my edge factor and we were doing the episode where after uh, uh, Casey and Evan broke up that she starts dating again and I'm like if he's a kid who has a lot of money what if he like buys off this guy to stay away from her like $5,000 to keep this guy away I'm like that's crazy and the same <laughs> so night guy would probably do that that's was like that? a possible thing some guy would maybe do right? yes yeah I so it's it, it seemed that? grounded, it seemed real. And then that, that, the night that episode aired, it was the same night that Gossip Girl had, um, I think they had a three-way, where somebody overdosed and Blake did. Lively fled the scene. Oh, and she does I was that. like, uh, <laughs> like I'm going to stop trying of. to be Gossip Girl God. and just be Greek. HBO. 
You know, I, I want to address that because that's a great question. I know we have other questions to get to, but I think what you're all responding to, at least I did, and it's the privilege that I feel as part of this group, is we use the word authenticity a lot. It's misused, but I think it exemplifies Greek. Because what Sean thought about in his writings and the creation of these characters and the stories, there didn't need to plot out edgy for the sake of being edgy. It was organic because it was real. Hence the word authentic. Well, and we shot everything. I don't know if you guys know this, but we were always in a basement. So our soundstage was underground and we never knew what time it was. And it was lit literally a time warp. I almost said literally as though I'm British. No, I'm not. Um, I love that word. But anyway, we were underground, and you kind of don't have anything else to do. We're all just down there together, and it's like you have to figure it out. And we all did, and you become a family. And it's, I think that weirdly could have been part of it, too, not to take away from the writing or the acting. However, just a fun fact. We were also, underground. Yeah, we Hold shot time. on film. I know that sounds... Oh. Which, I, which is like one of the last shows to shoot on actual 35 millimeter. Um, and I always felt like really privileged to be able to have had that experience as an actor, what that felt like to work on cameras like that. Because now everything's shot digitally, and it was But it was, it was also different. the sets, and too. It was also, well, and a, when the, you finish a scene, they say, check the gate, which means you have to check to see if there's anything in front of the lens that we would maybe have to shoot again. And now, when you're on set, you don't hear that anymore. We just move on. No, no, we say check the gate. It's just like check the card reader, though. But it's you still say check thing. the gate. Yeah, you still say it. But <laughs> yeah, so make but sure was, you were recording. Not the same. <laughs> but yeah, that film, there was no glitch you on your card reader. Yeah, and you're the on. It was on. Let's go. I was to say the film shooting film, um, the kind of lighting we did. We tried to make it look like a feature film every week. So it was an homage to all of the '80s films of Breakfast Club and um, uh, some uh, kind of wonderful and pretty in pink and do Dobblers, Lloyd Dobler. Ferris Bueller. Say anything. Um, so between the set design, you know, we took a, a feature producer who had never produced television, and we made her the television line producer. So she had to make up a bunch of stuff, and I didn't have to trick her into doing stuff because she didn't know what she was supposed to be doing. It was great. <laughs> and she so, got to AFI, right? And we had, a, we had a baby writer who we were trying to hire uh, on a different show called Wildfire we were doing. Oh, and yeah. his writings... Hey, horse fans. We like horse fans. <laughs> And, um, are cool. and so we read the script in the mornings. We had the meeting with Sean later that day. And the meeting turned into, are we going to hire this, this baby writer to be the staff writer, which is like the lowest writer. Um, and by the end of uh, 10 pages in, I was calling Lloyd going, we're hiring this kid and we're making this fucking pilot. This pilot's amazing. And what led to the visuals, shooting film, shooting uh, the sets we built to be super realistic, Cappy's... Um, the KT house was an actual, had had holes in the wall and moldy wallpaper, and the Omega Chi house was really nice, and, and ZBZ house, we, we really tried to make it a movie every week, and between his words, this cast, and those cinematic choices, I think that's what made it stand up. Yeah. <laughs> like, Shit. Yep. <laughs> Do you all have a favorite Real relationship or on yes. our characters? Oh, either. Yeah. God. Well, I can't play favorites. Mine is obvious. Yeah. <laughs> she got married. She married hers. <laughs> Woo! That was a good, fun month. <laughs> <laughs> that first month of us working together. That was good times. Yeah. Uh, amazing. I think Rusty's was probably Johanna Brady. Yeah. yeah. Then she left for school and he was bummed out. She went to FBI school. Oh, yeah, and then she went on FBI on another show. <laughs> and I saw her. That's right. <laughs> then, then she tried to nail The Bachelor. And, then she, yeah, she also married yeah. somebody. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. She did great. Um, yeah, that's probably that. You right there. She's asking the million-dollar question that I figured one of you would when I didn't get to it. Uh, and that is about the revival. I know there had been an announcement about three years ago, and then it kind of stalled. Oh, yeah, so boo. what's happening? I don't know. <laughs> That's a producer, a producer question, I think. Right? I just got to make sense, and I don't know. Like the show, we we're talking about the show as authenticity, and it's organic how everything came together. It's just like just it's got to wait for things to happen the right way, I guess. I don't know. I'll tell you what. If you guys are excited about that, cheer right now. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. 
Okay. What would it take? <laughs> Clear? It's Realistically, clear. what would it take? What would it take? There are many, many things, right? <laughs> and many things, but it starts with an audience that's craving for it. So if you really want it, you let people know. Social media is really the place to let people know that. And if you crave it and want it, well, just maybe we might be able to do that. Yeah, we need the audience to be loud about it like you just were. So <laughs> it's good. Back you wave the back there. The script, yes. Script, some kind, I guess. Hi. Hi. Oh, oh gosh. That's a great oh, question. You want to go hard. first? Heath and Calvin have about three kids. Uh, <laughs> we're super successful. And it, it's just right. It always felt right. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. I have no idea, honestly. Like, we're not like together I, anymore? No, we're together. We're together. We're together. <laughs> listen, listen. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. I thought to me. it was a smoke show. You can't do any better. That's white. That's wife material, Sue. <laughs> yes, it is. You probably yell at like customer service for me too, and like all the cool things. You're like, yeah, don't mess with her. She's psycho. And you love it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. She's with Cappy, okay? She's with Cappy. Right, right. <laughs> obviously, obviously. I don't. I wonder though, like, where she would be. Would they have kids? Would they not have kids? Yeah, I had this idea that like it's the graduate, like we're gonna like get married and then like Evan comes over and he like stops the wedding and then we wow. end up on a bus together. Like, <laughs> and it just ends and there's like lots of Simon and Garfunkel. Like <laughs> so that's in my dream. <laughs> or <laughs> Just thought, no. you know, blue sky, blue sky. But, I, but, I, you know, but I will say that there was a script that was written for the reunion. Um, the, I don't, I, I hope we get to do a reunion at some point with somebody who wants to do it. Um, the, the one thing that I was excited about for Casey's character in that script that I feel like I can talk about because I think should a reunion happen, it wouldn't be a 10, it would be a 15 or, you know, further down the road. But, uh, but it, was, it was about Casey's uh, uh, role in politics. It was about her speaking up. It was about her getting active. It was about her not supporting a politician, but her being a politician and making a difference and making a change. And I was really proud of that storyline. Um, and I wish I could have seen Spencer or knock it out of the park, but oh, um, but you. I can say you know uh, that about uh, the the script that was written. Casey Cartwright for president. That's what I'm saying. Yes. C squared. Twenty twenty. Yeah, there's still many years uh, left. We can right. Thank you. Thank you. It was it was fun to write to write Calvin to to see a character that you know at that time that wasn't burdened by his sexual orientation, but um, owned it and was proud of it, and just wanted to figure out how he could introduce it into this uh, hypermasculine world um, while still having fun in it. Um, but uh, but no, it was, it was it was really important, and what um, you know uh, Zach and Paul brought to that relationship uh, was more than I expected. You know, it was kind of a joke at the end of the pilot, but the fact that um, I do see that relationship continuing on past the series because of everything that they brought to it. So um, thank you for saying that. Thank you. <laughs> I just have to say one thing. My favorite, one of my favorite moments of the. And I just told you the story, which was one of your greatest lines, and I. It's, uh, and it was so Capital that he's c coming out to the fraternity. Do you remember the right, scene? Yeah, and he's yeah. like, guys, I have something to tell you. I'm gay. And they're all like, oh, God, thank God. We <laughs> thought you found a beaver slept with your sister. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 
We knew you were gay, bro. It's fine. He's like, yeah, 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 all good. Don't worry about it. It's fine, man. And then he gets really pissed. <laughs> his and sister. So well done. So well done. And his sister, I, did, I remember this. It was one of those things where I was driving. I was like, oh, yeah, Heath's sister's name was Heather. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Again, one of those jokes where it's like, okay, it's funny. Either, either, it's gold. Yeah. <laughs> this gentleman over here. Uh, why is it Catherine? <laughs> we, he asked, who is your favorite secondary character and why Nora. is it Catherine? Yeah, Nora, Nora Kirkpatrick played Nora Catherine. Nora Kirkpatrick is just like a genius. Her and Rusty gave it a go for a little bit. <laughs> They tried it out. Why not? No, I mean, she, she was a, a spectacular and, well, and super she, talented actress. She read for Franny early on. Oh, did she? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yep, yep, what? yep. Wow. And we kept her in mind. And yeah. Yep. And then she was Catherine Parker, which was the name of Sigourney Weaver's character from Working Girl, of course. There's a lot of uh, people that attended also, Cypress Rose that are doing very well right now very, in their careers. Very, very like, well. You guys, you yeah. guys some good Who, who remembers the hot monster? Lori Lachlan's trying Dude, to get her kids in there now. What? Too soon? Oh, uh-huh. come on. I worked on Summerland. <laughs> no, there was, yeah, there, you guys had so many. I think it was that age range of people, and we shot in L.A. So you had this, like, ex- Accessibility to a lot of really talented actors who were just kind of up and coming, and every and we always had a lot of parts because we were always throwing these big parties. I mean, all these storylines are so fun, and so we, we were really able. You guys were able to cast some really great people, and we were able to work with them as actors. We also our <laughs> so, line producer, like I said, who didn't know how to produce television, it was perfect. She allowed us to make these cool deals with actors, and they weren't under contract, so normally writers that aren't flexible like Sean and producers that aren't ready to roll with it, we, you, you write these characters or these C parts and um, you want to have them under contract, which we just couldn't afford. We couldn't ha- afford to have that many actors under contract or guarantee them. So what we would have is kind of a rolling ensemble of like, oh, David Franco this week's going to come and do. Oh, awesome. He wasn't David Franco. I was like, USC. Yeah. But he was just a guy that auditioned that I was like, do you think he's related to James Franco? (laughs) Maybe. And I was like, and they're like, yeah, he is. And then we see him and they're like, he's definitely related to him. But he was just Jordan Masterson. Um, like so many, uh, Danny Weaver, Olivia Munn, uh, Olivia Munn just yeah. randomly was in like, Jamie Chung, Jamie yeah. Chung, but like Janine Garofalo Rock, was the woman's Jenny. studies teacher. Janine Garofalo was on the just was like so we cool. offered her the part because we just loved her, and she was like, "I'm in town, sure." Yeah, yeah. yeah I like the show. It's good. Dan it's Castellano, good show. Charisma yeah. Carpenter played our J- Annie Cusack was my mom. Oh my gosh, she's the best. Yeah. I loved her too. There's so many people there. It's pretty so cool. Good. What a cool Everybody. job. Well, How about Lauren Conrad? Yeah. Iconic. That was iconic. That was exciting. I, I, I read somewhere that she was like a Greek fan and immediately called casting. I was like, we got to get her in the show. It's a dream sequence. That's all I know. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> and then we had uh, Otter from Animal House as an homage. Who was, whose dad was he? Oh. The actor from, lead guy from Animal House. Was he Cappy's dad? Cappy's dad, yeah. Oh, yeah, we also God. knew his dad. We don't know. You'll let us know. Yes. But you gotta look in the yearbook. Who signed your yearbook? <laughs> oh yeah, did we we didn't ever make a yearbook, did we? Oh questions. Uh, this person in the middle, yep. I mean the cool thing. The, the reception of the show was interesting because as far as our ratings uh, went, they were good, not great. But what kept getting us picked up was our performance on iTunes and downloads. And we realized, like, I felt like the old guy where I was like, started to realize college kids didn't have TVs. And I'm like, I don't understand. How do they watch television? <laughs> and they're like, on their computers. I'm like, I don't understand. <laughs> Everyone um, watches it now. <laughs> we had no idea. On phones and so I mean that you know I think that that was that helped a lot and it was also it was interesting just because you know the way the show was marketed in the beginning with the red cup and it being called Greek and there was a lot of expectation from the Greek system that um, it was just sort of a takedown like we were just exploiting them and, and and trying to make them look bad and then they saw the show and they were like 
okay, you're cool. And it kind of like, for me, when that happened, it was this, for me, it was the same as like a doctor watching a medical show saying like, you're getting it right. And I was like, thank you, Greek system. So, uh, um, but, uh, but outside of that, I don't. I mean, people would come up to us. You would you know, hear it more And then than... eventually like, the show started going international and I would start getting like, I would travel and people would be like, oh my God, I love you in France, you're amazing. You know, it's like so great. It was really, really exciting. Was I really don't speak accent. any English. I like it. No, I think pa- Paul James like found like a bootleg DVD when he was in like traveling abroad too. And it was yeah. just like overdubbed like bad Vietnam voices. And somewhere. I was like, I think we made it, man. Like, it was <laughs> <laughs> The first time I, I, I knew we made it was, um, I got a call, uh, I went to USC and I got a call from the film school and they're like, hey, can you come like screen Greek and do like a lecture? Oh. And I was like, that's so cool. It is. And so I went and taught a class and or did a lecture. We screened an episode, it was the season opener. And then at the end of the event, one of the kids came up to me and was like, hey, I'm, you're a sick up, I'm a sick up, hey. He's like, you should come to one of our parties. <laughs> and, and Sean I was, was like, like, I'm there. May, maybe I will, because I, I wasn't really in the Greek system at USC. I was at San Francisco State. So one day... Three like, weeks later. Wait, you were a sig I was a sig Oh, my boyfriend in college was a sig Oh. Ah. Your boyfriend I in just am remembering awesome. for the first time right now. But uh, so the reason I knew we were big is that I was playing poker with a bunch of the casts of Greek up at my house, and Scott Foster was there, and he was dating Laura Prepon from the 70s show at the time, and she's a really good poker player. Don't play poker with her. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I get a text from the SIG app, and he's like, hey, are you coming to the party tonight? And are you bringing the Greek cast? And I was like, oh, hey, you guys want to go to a USC party? Uh, and they were like, yes. I think Zach and I were there. And so we, we, called, there? we called a bunch of Ubers. Yeah, I think and we, Zach and I were there. And we rolled down, and I it was, was definitely you there. were there, and it was Clark, Clark Duke, Clark Duke Scott, and it seemed like a really good idea. <laughs> And it totally made sense, and, and we get there, and I knew the show had made it when we walked in, and it literally was record scratch, and everyone was like, oh my God, that's Donna from the 70s show. <laughs> no, they, that's not true. They, they, they actually went, they, that's not true. First, first they said, oh my God, it's the cast of Greek. Hey, that's also Donna from the 70s show. <laughs> and literally the party stopped, and then we had to be whisked. I think we were whisked to the VIP section, which was the front lawn. It was like, <laughs> and, and, this is a and then, like, and I was like, and then I was there and I got nervous and I realized kind of like the Mexico story. I was like, I'm the executive producer of this TV show and I just brought the entire cast of Greek and I was like, guys, behave and check ID. I don't know what's happening. Don't, and then cut to 10 minutes later, Clark Duke is on the roof <laughs> with Jacob Zachar. And I love it. It was, it was a, it was a cigarette party. I mean, Greek. I feel like my sister wow. Greer was at USC at this time because I heard this story. I was not there. I was probably the girls like were not York. there. We were not there. I was there. You were, oh, Amber was there. <laughs> I was not there. God. Amber was there. Okay. I was not. You weren't on the and, roof, And though. I remember you being like, the, the cast of Greek was okay. a USC party. What, what? Why were they there, <laughs> I guess? Little... So the VIP was two trees and a piece of tape. <laughs> And I think they made like a freshman stand there and just like tell people no. It, it, it was not. High security. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, speaking of parties, sadly, this amazing reunion party has to come to an end. I want to thank everyone for showing up. Thank everyone here, this amazing panel, for coming and talking about thank this you wonderful guys. show. Make your friends watch it on Hulu. It's also available on the Proform app. And tweet, tweet, tweet about that reunion because I want to see it. Yes. I'll be, uh, if anybody happy. wants to get say, tequila get spit on them after this, kind of like just <laughs> meet me at the bar. Some kind of tag. We'll figure it hey, out. Hey, Sean, get oh, rid of those hats. Let's give us uh, some more of those. Also, thank, thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you so much.